Okay, we're back. This is Dave Vellante. We're live, VMworld 2011, and this is the spotlight called Beyond Storage Virtualization. We've got some great guests here. I'm here with Brian Dorr, who's the CTO of Savvis, cloud service provider, making a lot of noise in this space and actually doing some great stuff for customers. And I'm, uh, I'm also here with CMAC Nazari, who's the CTO of HP Storage. Gentlemen, welcome. Thanks for coming inside theCUBE. I think this is your first time, both of you inside theCUBE, right? Thanks very much, yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it's quite a production, isn't it? And uh, VMworld, we're here. Um, well, let me, let me start with you, uh, Brian. What do you think of the show so far? I think it's a great show. Yeah. This is one of the exciting shows to be at. There's a lot happening, a lot of new product announcements. Uh, it's, it's a good combination of uh, exposure to what's happening in the industry and people you need to meet with. Your space is exploding. I want to talk a little bit about the cloud service provider area and how you guys are innovating and, and really driving a lot of change in, in IT. And uh, at CMAC, you're now, of course, you've gone from, from CTO at 3PAR, and you're now part of a slightly larger company. Yeah, but slightly is, that, is an understatement. Yeah. <laughs> yes, a much, much larger organization. That's so um, hopefully you can keep that innovation coming, right? Yes, so, it, uh, it, and in fact, there's a lot more resources available, so, so we should be able to accelerate some of the stuff we've been doing, in fact. Great. So, uh, Brian, let's start with you. So we, we just talked about uh, storage virtualization and, um, and how it changed things. It was interesting, I observed that a lot of our clients, our end user clients, they were doing server virtualization, but they weren't virtualizing storage. Now, you talked, we talked off camera, you were saying that when you started your project, this initiative inside of Savvis, and I want to talk more about it, you started Greenfield. So you had the luxury of being able to, they didn't have to rip and replace. You architected it from scratch, you know, for a cloud environment, yep. if I can say that. So, start by telling us a little bit about the part of Savvis that you're involved in, and the area that you're talking about here, and then, what you decided to do and how you did it and how your customers are taking advantage of it. Okay, so when Savvis started um, with virtualized storage, it was actually before virtualization was cool. Um, and server virtualization as we know it today, hypervisor based, really was not mainstream in any way. Uh, I'm talking about 2004. Uh, that's when we first picked up um, HP 3PAR, then it was just 3PAR, with the expressed idea that we wanted to fix what we saw as we evolved or began our next generation of uh, managed uh, compute and storage offerings, uh, a real problem in delivering a value proposition via storage. It was just too hard to get the economics to make sense when you were buying and allocating disk on a per customer basis, running at highly underutilized levels. So the idea of putting a virtualization step between the physical storage and the allocation to the customer that would give you an opportunity to insert ultimately policy as to how storage was allocated in real time on a per customer basis, really the genesis of thin provisioning is what we launched into back at that in that time frame. And, and the, whole, the whole idea that a service provider needs to be able to offer services at scale uh, that are giving economies back to the customer, not just passing through charges, uh, was, was our motivator. So thin provisioning was the enabler for that. So that, that's an efficiency play. Um, obviously you're able to take more advantage of the capacity that's on the floor, provision it quickly, service customers. Um, are you able to start, are we at the point now where you can segment and provide quality of service by different customer levels? Or do you, can you actually do that today? Or is that sort of a future? No, you can absolutely do that. And, and you see what's happening in server virtualization and in storage virtualization and in the, in the same key themes are starting to emerge. They're just being manifest in different ways. Uh, the idea that in st storage virtualization with this inserted virtualization layer, the idea that certain physical media aren't allocated to a specific customer, the insertion of a decision point that allows through virtualization uh, a quality of service control that might be dictated by type of storage, um, that a, a particular uh, customer data piece, uh, piece of data gets allocated to is very much a part of the design of this generation, this current generation of storage, um, taking advantage of virtualization. So you heard uh, Steve Herod this morning talking about the insertion of policy uh, across the infrastructure uh, through, uh, through the hypervisor and through VMware. Well, the storage vendors are, are making it possible to insert that same kind of policy uh, that's going to give us further controls over what kind of cost the customer has, what kind of performance they get, uh, what kind of high availability they get. All that's now possible since we're, we're decoupled. Well, CMAC, when, when 3PAR started, you're, you used to use the term, maybe you still do, utility storage, remember? And, and back at the time, um, 
storage service providers, SSPs were the hot trend. That's correct. And you guys started the company targeting those types of firms, didn't you? Exactly. Talk a little bit about that and how their requirements are, are different. So, uh, one of the facts that was obvious when the company was started that allocation of the storage was quite difficult. It was, it was, there was a lot of thought that has to be given to the configuration, set aside the disk, create the London, and what you ended up with was something that was quite static. The idea was to be able to insert a level of virtualization that divorces the presentation from the physical manifestation, which are the drives, right? So you could create these much more quickly, and because you have this virtualization, you can actually change the quality of service, for instance, from RAID 5 to RAID 1, from Fiber Channel to Near Line. So the entire design process was around making it highly efficient, but also be able to actually create the resources much more quickly and adapt to the load that is coming in, either statically or dynamically, statically by the, the storage administrator deciding I need to move this to something that is to a higher class, lower class, or have the system react depending on what the system and the policies set. So the design goals from the beginning was be able to actually manufacture this, these LUNs and essentially storage as transparently as possible to the users. And that's something that I think was attractive to service providers because configuring and managing was a lot of work and quite static, right? That, that really fit the workflow of the time where services have to come online really quickly and be torn down really quickly. So Brian, I, I've, I've, we've talked a lot on theCUBE um, for the last several months and even last year at VMworld, I go back and we talked about the sort of schism between the service providers and, and the traditional IT environments. Now you started with the Greenfield, so you had that luxury, but um, you have an IT background, you, you know the challenges of you know, dealing with legacy infrastructure. Um, there's a gap in our opinion, big gap between the, the best of the best service providers and, and where the traditional, typical, the average, if you will, IT is. And, and in some respects, that gap may not be closing. I think if anything, the service providers are investing more, growing their businesses. I don't hear a lot of service providers saying, well, we're flat budget, you know. I hear, we can't grow fast enough. That's right. So, it's, we stand a reason that you're innovating faster. Can you talk about that within your environment? Maybe even give us some specifics around if you can, you know, any metrics that you look at, paint a picture of what it's like in your environment, growth, and you know, what your strategy is there. Yeah, so you have it exactly right. The, um, uh, the idea that service providers have an opportunity to uh, continue driving investment at a time, or uh, I would say driving investment through cycles of, of feast and famine that might otherwise hit the enterprise, um, is absolutely uh, what we think to be an uh, a reason why most enterprises should think about uh, a service provider for some part of their infrastructure. Uh, we are absolutely driving uh, innovation and, and adoption of new technology, and not just adopting what's thrown over the wall, but actually getting closer and closer to major vendors like HP, technology vendors, working our roadmaps closely aligned with them, sharing with them deeply our problems with using their technology as it is today, and working through uh, those issues and getting next generations of technology with levels of influence that an individual enterprise, I mean certainly there are lots of enterprises who have big influence, but on par, uh, we're going to be able to, to, to accomplish a lot in that regard. And most, most recently, an example of that working with HP is, is this idea of how we deal with uh, um, uh, federated environments, um, peer motion as a way to help us through uh, the very difficult challenge of upgrading tens of arrays. I mean, we've got some 53 par arrays uh, in production today. And when we have to upgrade an array, uh, it takes a lot of effort. When you have to retire an array, it's even more effort. And when you can do things like peer motion or operate in a federated way, those kinds of challenges get much more easily solved. But it takes the intersection of big volumes of, 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 of deployed systems and a, and a vendor, a technology partner willing to work things out that makes that kind of thing happen. Yeah, uh, um, we've done some research on this area. Do you lease your infrastructure? Is it? Or no, we buy. You buy, okay, so, I mean, you can, you can imagine it's even worse for companies who, who lease and everything's coming off a lease every three years and they've got to, you know, roll their, their, their arrays. We quantified this, and, I, and I'd love to get your, your opinion, um, that, it was a typical size customer. It was a mid-size, actually relatively large customer. Then it cost them fifty thousand dollars to migrate an array, and, yeah. and that blew us away. We did a lot of work and tried to quantify it. And said, "Wow, that's a huge problem." Yeah. Um, so this idea of being able to have a capability of doing some kind of perpetual, non-disruptive migration is really what this 
federated storage or, 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 or peer motion and imagine, solves, right? and imagine doing that in an environment like a service provider where you don't just have one or two, you've got 50 or 80, and you don't just have one corporate set of interfaces, you've got a whole array of customers with their own operating environments, some in your colo environment, some in your managed environment, some in your cloud environment. All of those need to be dealt with as you deal with the array. Uh, from a retirement perspective or an upgrade perspective, it is a huge challenge. And that's why we need continued innovation at the, at the technology level. So CMAC, I mean we're talking about beyond storage virtualization, so talk to me about peer motion, what that is, you know, how'd you guys come up with this idea, how it's different, give us a, you know, we got about two minutes left, give us a snapshot as to what you guys are, are doing there. So, so peer motion really comes out directly as a result of talking to folks like Savvis, understanding the pain that they have in migrating data, and essentially not having the flexibility that they have across arrays. There's lots of flexibility within the array, but across arrays it's just still sort of islands and, and, and the communication between them is not seamless and requires lots of work. So um, the idea behind peer motion is you have a series of arrays and they typically are on the floor overloaded, lots of spindles, they're going working as fast as they can, and you bring up a brand new array, it's essentially not doing anything, right? So think about moving the data, the same way, you know, think of the ESX, you add another ESX, vMotion kicks in, and all of a sudden, you have much better balance among your ESX hosts, and much better service that is provided to the VMs. We think of the, the volumes, or the lens essentially, is another entity that lives within the network, and should be able to migrate seamlessly without actual disruption to the servers, right? from one storage array to the storage array to react to workload changes, to react to the case where you need to retire a particular uh, array because it's no longer in use, or in fact you have even a third party array that you're interested to migrate the data from the third party array, right? So those are the kind of ideas that, that we're pursuing and, and, and the first release will allow you to actually migrate the data from the three part storage to three or four storage, sort of completely transparent to the host. Now you're not solving the problem of migrating heterogeneous assets, right? It's only homogeneous, uh, right? The, Here the, the, the current generation, that's what we do. We the advantage migrate. is you're not putting a virtualization layer Exactly, in there, which, exactly. You know, we, have, yeah. we all know the, the benefits yeah. and drawbacks of doing that. Right. Uh, the, 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 the advantage is it's native, you know, exactly. high performance, no overhead. Exactly. But Brian, do you have, you probably don't because you started from scratch, but do you envision um, maybe your peers as having that requirement for heterogeneous and CMAC, is that something that you guys can address in the future? We, uh, yes, we, we aren't uh, completely segregated in one technology right. today. And so, as you take customers from one environment to another, uh, you absolutely uh, need to deal with that cross-platform uh, challenge. So, uh, the, more, the more we can push into the array, the intelligence to be other array aware, even when that other array isn't necessarily uh, the same technology base, um, that's very helpful. And, um, and, and what, what you see happening, because you're exactly right, you don't need a virtualization layer here. You don't want more technology here. You want to push that inside the array and let that policy and technology rest there. So we need that. See, Mac, is, is, we have only about 30 seconds. Is that something that's technically feasible in the near term? So, so the, uh, we are, as you alluded earlier, we have a, a small percentage of the market. As we grow the market, we need to actually you know, migrate the data from the other arrays. And for us, it's absolutely a goal to be able to actually migrate the data from other arrays, not necessarily federate, but actually migrate the data into the federated storage that the three public provide. Great. All right, Brian, CMAC, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE, sharing your thoughts. Um, we are um, going to take a quick break and uh, appreciate you guys sharing your insights. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.